Today we, we're sanding the floors. So we've hired this sander, this big um, kind of posh floor sander thing, and we're going to sand the floors. In order to sand the floors, we're going to have to clear all the stuff out of the boat and hang things up in the ceiling and shove things under the bow deck and shove things over in the engine bay and in the gas locker because we've got a lot of stuff in the boat. Probably not as much as you've got in your boat. Um, but yeah, so we're going to be clearing all that today uh, and then we're going to be cracking on, prepping to sort out this floor for sanding. That's Martin, right down the bottom of the boat. Wave! Yee. <laughs> Um, and that's what we've got to sort out and clear up. It's going to be a little bit like Tetris. I think it's taking longer than I want it to take because I'm trying to sort stuff out as I um, as I do it, and that I think it's a bit a bit silly because I don't need to. I just need to shove it all in and get it all packed away. How are you developing your Tetris skills? My Tetris skills are quite good, generally. Um, they're not as good as your Tetris skills, but you've had years of Tetris in. I'm making slithers. That does look pretty cool. These are slithers. I use these slithers to fill in some of the bigger gaps in the floorboards that have developed um, over time while we've been walking on. Uh, and we need to fill in those gaps before we do the sanding. And that's what I'm going to use. This bit's sticking up a bit too far. It needs to be raised up so we can sand it, but this bit is a bit, bit high. Well, so this is the same. One thing you can do is just take them off a little bit. So far, filling these floorboard gaps with these slivers has been a pain in the arse. And both of us have been struggling. I'll show you what we've been doing. Ooh, me back. Who needs knees? How's it going? <laughs> How's it going? Of all the horrible jobs that we've done on the boat, and I'm putting cleaning out under the bow, really, really, uh, under the bow deck, really high mm -hmm. on that list. Mm -hmm. This is not very far beneath it. Uh, I think it just takes time, doesn't it? And having the right kind of slivers. Yes, when you see a gap, you just kind of want to keep going. Mm, that's true. It's like that bit that's underneath this sanding block. This here? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's got to be done. That's got to be filled. We've cleared the floors, we've cleared the boat, so now we are going to be sanding the floors. We've hired one of those big huge sanders, um, which we've called Xander, and uh, we've hired a little edge sander, which we've called Junior, and we are literally starting from one end of the boat and working our way all the way down to the other end of the boat which is going to be a lot of work but hopefully pretty cool when we finished it it will look lovely what do you think martin yep <laughs> it's going to be interesting done the first few passes across the boards to try and level it out and um, it's actually a bit more difficult than it looks yeah isn't it yeah it's mainly because of the the machine has uh, well obviously it's a power tool it's got a lot of power and making sure that when you you come down it's a smooth transition so that it doesn't judder yeah. and create these little um, what they call chatter marks which I really like that term. yeah chatter yeah, as, yeah. as you would imagine yes also having the confidence that you're lowering it right mm. and, and also having the confidence not to raise it up too much I'm raising it up too much which means that then when I have to so if that's the floor right what I'm doing is I'm raising it there rather than say there mm. 
if I'm raising it there, when I've got to bring it back down like that, it, I have to control it a lot more, and that's hard mm. to do when it's moving. Whereas yeah. if it was there, I'd just be. Yeah, it's, it's a much more subtle. It. Yeah, yeah, it's a much more it. subtle sort yeah. of uh, lift and lower. And sometimes you get into a sort of zen with it, and you really you can just go ooh, ooh a bit like hoovering, where you don't think about it. Um, but then occasionally you just start pulling it forward and back like a hoover, don't you? Because, yeah. I don't know, you just sort of forget what you're doing, maybe, I don't know. At the minute, it's it's not so so bad anyway, because we, we're we just levelling, and um, you can see where boards are higher than others, basically. And um, right. know, like we knew that, because we know that from laying the floor, that there were at least three kinds of maple uh, from uh, at least two different manufacturers because they were um, slightly like you know a gnat's whisker narrower but also in some cases they were thicker just yeah. a little bit thicker so we knew that anyway and we were trying to sort of work that in as we laid the floor but it was when you've got this sort of pile of stuff it was quite hard work to do so um, we knew that when we came to sand it, it, it would be a bit more sort of uh, tricky, I suppose. The thing I think is really interesting is you don't realise quite how uneven the floor is until you pass something over the top of it that actually is very flat. Yeah. Some of the grain already, and we've only just sort of really taking the varnish off, is just absolutely lovely. Gorgeous. One of the things about maple is that you do get this very sort of crazy mixture of grain and pattern that goes every which way so you, you you know it is sometimes difficult to know which way the grain is going when you've got these gray or these orange boards that are covered with um, years or decades of uh, varnish and stuff then you start to sort of take them off especially like this where you can still see sections where it's not touched it and in some cases there might be marks and indents that we don't mind about because they are old. The next thing we have to do is basically start to go up and down um, on the same grip but probably a new sheet um, and that will even off some of the, the scuff marks that we've created, the cross pattern that we've created and the other thing is to move along in stages, just overlap it uh, and carry on and then overlap and carry on overlap. That's the plan. Hmm. We'll see how we go yeah. with it. Yeah. But I think we're doing, we're doing fine. We've never yeah. done it before. We're doing really yeah. well. <laughs> this is an edge sander. It is a very heavy tool but incredibly effective and so aggressive. We were calling this one Junior because it's smaller but I think I might upgrade it to Samson because it's a lot stronger. <laughs> I'm really tired just by doing like three foot. I'm just here for the day uh, to do some work on the floorboards, uh, mainly filling and uh, putting some slithers in. Uh, certainly the bottom half of the boat where we've already done quite a bit of work on sanding. Um, we knew that there'd be some filling to do, um, but we thought uh, do some sanding first and see what what more that might reveal. This afternoon I'm going to start filling with a mixture of PVA and um, sawdust. I'm only filling gaps that are quite large. The rest, or some of them, not, not all of them, will be filled with um, a sawdust filler. I made a paste and I've added a little bit of water because the PVA is quite thick and I made myself a little spatula out of an old um, package carton 
and it's nice and uh, floppy but not too floppy so I'm hoping that it'll push it into the gaps between the floorboards. I've now done about a quarter of the boat and um, as you start doing it you can see the difference and um, how good it looks even though it's still quite rough and needs sanding but once you start it's quite difficult to stop and you think okay I'm just gonna carry on all the way through and fill the lot the thing I don't know about at the moment because it's still very much in the early sanding stage is how much of it will remain once we start sanding how deep is it into the into the grooves I suppose because I don't want to waste a lot of time and effort if come the third sand there's none of it left and we then have to fill and sand again um, so I don't know I don't know what to do at, at this moment I probably will continue and do a bit more in the hope that it'll be okay done the bow end about uh, almost a third I think and it's looking really good I'm pleased that I, I've been able to to, to get on and uh, smooth it down a bit. I was a bit worried, I must admit, that it was taking a long time. And it's slow, but we'll see how it goes. just caught my dust bag and there's a rip in it so I'm just going to see if I can fix that or whether I have to put a new one on. I'd rather fix it because um, you can take the ones you don't use back and get, get you three quid back. So I'm going to have to change the Frankenstein bag now because it, um, I just couldn't, uh, I just couldn't carry on with it. I've changed the grit to 80, and now I'm going to put a new bag on. One of the things I have noticed with the um, the sanding sheets is that once I've put them on, sometimes, even though it's tight, they do come loose. So I'm listening for a change in the sound of the machine and I can tell that it's, it's coming loose so we'll see how it goes. I've put it on quite tight but yeah if it comes loose within seconds it's just going to tear so I have to be careful. Um, I, I, I don't want to get through too many shoots again we can take them back if we, uh, if we don't use them. I'm stroking our floor. I'm going to see what the difference is between 80 grit and 120 grit and see if I can see where it changes and if it makes any difference whatsoever. It looks, this looks cleaner, uh, but I'll just see. Okay. Oh, wow. There. That's the transition. <laughs> that, that's where you started wasn't it? Yeah, I started in the middle and went. That is still really rough and you can see it's soft. Proper soft. And this is a sharper grain by far. We've sanded the floor. We are cleaning up the floor and just doing a few last uh, little bits to it. And one of the things that we're doing is um, I'm picking out one or two really pretty floorboards and I'm going to scrape them with a cabinet scraper just to make them a little bit shinier and a little bit more pretty. So that's the board that I've already done. And I'm not, I'm not going mad on it, I'm just doing a little bit of scraping just to make it stand out a little bit. 
obviously they need to be sort of visible so I need to know that I'm not going to be covering it with a big fat piece of furniture. This one's nice isn't it? That one there. This one? Yeah. Yep. That one's nice but I think too close. Which one? That dark one. Yeah. That, yeah. yeah. It's also long. So <laughs> yeah. 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 You want to make Save it. my knees. Yeah. yeah. Difference so between that board there, there and that board there and even that board there. We've spent a ridiculous amount of time trying to clear the dust, the remaining dust off the floor. Even though we had uh, dust bags and extraction when we were sanding, um, it still leaves dust just gets everywhere so the walls were covered in dust and the floor still had a lot of dust and you can see see what it looks like it's very lovely <laughs> so now we are just about ready to start varnishing we've bought this floor varnish it's supposed to be really hard wearing it's been really good uh, it was recommended and um, yeah, we're going to apply it with this little sanding, uh, painting pad. So I've got sanding on the brain. So we're going to apply it with this little painting pad and um, hopefully it will go really, really easily. So Martin's checking all the whether we've got whether we we properly got it whether we've put varnish on everything. What do you think? I think it's good. I think it's looking nice, isn't it? Yeah, it's a nice sheen. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. It's not too shiny. It's not too um, flat. Some lovely bits. Look at this bit. I like this bit. Oh, this is so pretty. Oh, but look at that one. Look at the one that we scraped. 